Okay, this trip report is fucking wild. I mean, we literally had a random homeless guy chill with us for a bit, but more on that later. So here we were, five people, though not for long, ready to take 22 grams of high Hawaiians. Of course, you can always take more, and some other strains might be more potent per gram, but this was the strongest box we could find. So we found ourselves a nice park and munched them down with some ducks who definitely wanted a piece. Somehow, we've not even started and we've already fucked up, because let me tell you, we should should have found an empty spot to chill in first. As we were walking to look for a spot, one of my mates starts throwing up like he's just come from a bar in Russia and it's fair to say that slowed us down. Bear in mind, we're still near the entrance of the park. It's been like half an hour, we've made practically no progress and my friend gets too tired to walk and sits down. So we're already feeling it and there's people around us, which is not a good setting, especially with doses this high. As much as we tried to move, two of my mates would not budge, so we all sat down for a bit and started to feel progressively more funky. That is, until two of my other mates really wanted to walk around, and this is where the group kind of split up. This was really weird, and I still don't understand how it happened, nor do I recommend splitting up at all, but myself and two others ended up going for a walk. We had a few tokes of some very legal weed, and I was already tripping insanely hard, so fro in having practically no tolerance to THC, and I got completely fucking launched even more. Well, <laughs> after a one minute walk that felt like half an hour, we see our two mates with a speaker playing music. And with them, a third individual who seemed to like our music and had decided to join us. Turns out it was an odd homeless man, so we all sat down and had the most awkward telepathic conversation I've probably ever been involved in. He kept trying to stop conversations, but between trying to understand English and trying not to laugh, because what he was saying was kind of depressing and I didn't want to be rude, it was a pretty strange and hilarious situation. This weird atmosphere fear of trying to limit my laughter though made me realize something really profound about myself, which is that I'm always limiting my happiness as to conform to social norms and everyone does this to an extent. <laughs> Once I realized that there's really no reason to limit my own happiness to fit in, I started getting the shroom giggles which essentially felt like God was fucking every pore of my skin with a 9 inch dodo made of love. Even that doesn't really come close to describing it. I closed my eyes to meditate and I literally felt like I was on DMT. There was this presence or entity or aliveness to my visuals and it was communicating with me. It literally felt like the exact same entity that I've met many times on DMT. I mean, I literally wouldn't have been able to tell them apart if I tried. My closed eye visuals were basically made up of this massive smiley face that was every color at once and seemed to reflect how I felt at the time. It used facial expressions to communicate things to me and it seemed to really enjoy reminding me that one day I was gonna die. And it could in fact happen right now, so I might as well just accept it and die now. When I accepted it, it morphed into this door which I passed through, aka ego death, and there were hundreds, thousands, billions, I don't know, of these smiley faces that all started to hug me. Finally, the friend who wouldn't budge from where we were, which by the way was still covered in people who needed the toilet, so that was our new mission. One of my other friends also threw up, but he said he felt a lot better afterwards, which was pretty awesome, and for me, I can't lie, peeing felt like orgasm orgasms though. Not peeing also felt like orgasms though, either way I was having a good time. We made our way back to the original lake, even closer to the entrance, and at this point I was laughing like a maniac because I was finding things to laugh at faster than I could actually laugh. It kept exponentially multiplying to where I would just break through for a few moments and then forget everything, return back to my body and then start laughing again. Once we all found inner peace, we went exploring and realized that despite that hour long walk to and from the toilet, which was actually more like two minutes, we realized that we had only explored like 2% of the park and it just happened to be the most packed. Everywhere else was pretty much completely empty, so we did a really great job there of making this as difficult as we could have. Now it was time to throw in some weed and nitrous. The bad news for you guys is I don't remember what happened at all on the nitrous trip, but I assume it was pretty cool. The intensity of the trip itself without any weed was almost the same intensity, maybe just a little bit less than my previous 3 gram mushroom dose. And I'm honestly glad it didn't go further than that. There were some really intense moments in that trip for all of us. During the come up, I got really anxious watching my friend throw up and having all these people everywhere. Before we had even peaked, two people had approached us already. A crackhead who wanted to talk about his heroin addiction and a girl who didn't know how to roll backy. With come up anxiety in full force, I literally told myself I would never trip ever again though. To be fair, by the end of it, I already wanted to smoke some DMT. I hope you can learn 
from our mistakes because it's not necessarily fun to have to make them yourself. I had a really insane experience in this trip, which I talk about in this video. It involved clown faces in the grass laughing at me and teaching me how to behave. So if you're interested, check it out. Otherwise, hit that like button for me and subscribe if you want more trip reports like this one.